This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global. With me is Mr. Showtime, Sonny Edwards. Any news on yourself, Sonny? How's things? Um, there's some news coming, I mean, regarding my future. Um, you know, I made no secret that I was, I was sort of a little bit of a free agent, do you know what I mean? So there's some news regarding that. That's the first news. And I'm just kind of looking to see where we're going from there. I've got big aspirations, but it's just what we can what we can get now done. I mean, it's a hard climate for for any weight, but I think being a flyweight, flyweight, a super flyweight, makes the bigger fights and the better fights just that little bit easier to make for us. Do you know what I mean? Um, so ho ho hopefully I can get some of the fights that we've been looking at, we've been talked about over the line because it's been frustrating. I mean, since I won the British title, I had one fight in over a year. I mean, it's been very just stagnant because of no fault of my own, my promoters or, or my management team. Just the world's been on lockdown, do you know what I mean? So at any given opportunity, I'm looking ready to jump up for, for, for any of the biggest fight, the best fight I can get. It's, it, I've made it no secret that I'm ready for any of these big fighters, the, the names, the, the, the champions, any of them. I've made it clear to so not only the public, but my management and promoters. Um, so yeah, hoping that 2021 can be a big one for me because if I'm honest, I was a bit frustrated, a bit disappointed at the end of, you know, winning a British title after a good run of form. Then in the next 12 months, sort of boxing at the same level I'd already been winning at, winning comfortably again. Again, it's a good fight. I have no disrespect to Thomas or Somba, but they're not the fights that people are going to be that, that mega interested in watching. Do you know what I mean? It's the... It's the fights where they're, they're interested in the opponent as well, where it's a 50-50. That's where I'm going to really build my name and legacy. Until then, my my career just hasn't got the, you know, that, that seal of approval, okay, that he is the real deal. So I think I, I still need that, even though I think I've always been stepped up and stepped up and been trying to get the hard fights. They've been elusive sometimes. But I think we're at the stage now. I've been boxing for, I think, 16 years. I was having this conversation with my brother earlier. 16 long years. Um, if if I'm not ready now, then I I may never be. Maybe I'll do you know what I mean. But I feel like this is the time that I can I can make my claim for anyone in the world. And I've been like that for the last twelve months. Really, let's be real. I'm I'm just there. It's frustrating. But I think when everything opens up again, I'll I'll get something nailed on big easy because my positions with the WBO, the IBF, WBC. I don't think it will be too hard. But as it stands, it's quite hard with certain countries not being able to fly to certain countries, fights going left, right and centre with COVID tests or or just like we had them shows in Dubai got made, got cancelled, had shows in England get made, get cancelled all around the world. So there's a lot of obstacles at the moment. So any fights that do make it through the net, we've got to be grateful for. So any fights that I can get, I will be grateful for. So, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm hoping for a big fight next and... You know, I mean, if you lower your expectations and expect, I don't know, maybe another Thomas Asombo or, or, or Ryan Fowler etc. at this level, then at least won't be disappointed. Will it be a failure if you don't land a world title fight this year? Of course not. I'm only 25 and just turned. I'm still very young. I mean, by rights against some of the champions that are out there, right now I probably haven't done anything to suggest that I am capable of being in the ring of some of them. Do you know what I mean? Not shown it at any real distinct level, so it's yet to be seen. I just believe in myself a hell of a lot. I think my skills and, and my skill set will transcend, you know, at all the levels they told me they couldn't already. You know what I mean? I was told it wouldn't, it wouldn't work in the championships, you know, when I was first amateur boxing. I was told, oh, your style will work with the club shows. Oh, when they're hot, then you can't just box and move. Do you know what I mean? And then as a junior, I was told, oh, you can do it as junior, but you won't do it as senior. And I've done it as senior. Do you know what I mean? And then, and then as I was leaving, I was told, oh, he's not going to be able to do it as pro. And then I've done it as pro. So, and at each level, they always say, oh, he's going to get found out, he's going to get found out. And I'm yet to be real. I was, I was having a think the other day. I've not really ever really got out of the ring at any time ever and thought I was that inferior to the person I was in the, the ring with. I've never thought that I was, you know, I was battered there. Any fight I've ever lost, it's you know, a split decision, couple of points, close, you know what I mean? one of them I, I, I genuinely think I'm a very hard person to win around against I might not be the biggest punch the most entertaining the most exciting fight for the crowds and that but I think one thing I do bring is a style that is very hard to 
to win more rounds than you lose against. You know what I mean? And I think that's what I've that's what I've I've tried to master as my craft, and I think I'm getting quite close to it. And until I can get onto world level and bounce a few world champions head down. I'm just all smoke and mirrors at this point. And I do know that um, I'm, I'm very outspoken. I bang the drum a lot, but you've got to be at these weights. Otherwise no one will take notice. I mean, I could list five, 10 fighters equally as talented as me, as good as me, should be marketed the same, maybe even better. Like from, from this country, other countries, I can name loads of fighters, my weight, different weight. Sometimes you just got to do certain things and, when you're not getting the performances, you've got to always stay relevant. You know what I mean? You've always got to. It's important. A lot of people don't understand the game, and they get too they get too uh, concerned with everyone's opinion on them, rather than just being themselves and just. A lot of people, a lot of fighters, have some of the best personalities that you would know, Umar, because you've met a lot of people off camera, obviously. But then you chuck the camera in front of them, and it all kind of gets taken away you don't have a click of a button and as soon as that camera's over they'll be like oh fucking I hate interviews there and then they're put their normal person again and I just try and be myself I just try and believe in myself be outspoken and like I said this is the level I want to be at and that's why I talk and speak about myself the way I do like a lot of people call me arrogant deluded whatever but I do I put 16 years into this as like I said and I, I repeat that but no one can take away those no one can give me back those years if I stop boxing tomorrow no one can slap me back 16 years of, of, of hard work, <laughs> you know what I mean? So I've got to be proud of all my little victories and I will be every time and no one's going to stop me from that. Sonny, following on from a, a documentary last week, I want to speak to you about your advisor, Daniel Kinahan, uh, who also released a, a statement on TalkSport recently. Just talk to me about your relationship with Daniel. I mean, me and Daniel, we go way back, I mean, before I'd even thought about being a professional boxer, before I'd even done anything, I mean, I'd, 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 we'd been invited over, we'd, we'd, we'd been looked after and been had training camps over there, you know, from, from early on. I remember Charlie had his, his training camp with, before he fought Louis Norman over there. And it was just that Charlie wanted to go, you know, he's got his first title fight. Charlie thought, oh, where can we go in the world that's, you know, it's hot, got the gym set up. I want to do a three-week training camp. So we thought about, uh, well, he thought about this place because he'd been on holiday to Marbella and just walked in, did a bag session, do you know what I mean? And then they always said, if you ever want to come over, he, he asked to just use the gym. And then, you know what I mean? They, they, they welcomed us with open arms, picked us up from the airport. It was nice. And then ever since then, he's, he, he's been like a, a friend, an advisor to me in the sense of, if I'm at twos of myself, if I'm not sure if a decision I'm making is right for me or if I am think I'm asking for too much in contracts or if I'm saying a bit too much on the internet, he's someone I can have that phone call with and, and, and have that conversation with. And, and that's about it, to be honest. I mean, back at the very beginning, I, I trained in, the, at the time, the MGM gym, now the MTK gym, what it was, shall I say. Um, I trained there when I was still an amateur. I was on Team GB and they just was happy to have a GB team over there do you know what I mean and, and, and let me use the gym and I did pads with some of the trainers and whatnot and um and then when I did turn pro I moved over there but all Daniel ever really did for me in the sense of my boxing career is just said oh well they're doing good things because I've got a manager like this is what people don't understand I've got a manager you know who my manager is I, I've got a manager that deals with my every day and, and, and I've got a team around me that deal and, and, and if I'm honest he's not part of that because He's not part of MTK. Like, like, he doesn't deal with any of my day-to-day. So, I mean, he's someone that I can call to have a conversation with just same way that I could ring you, Uma, if I wanted your advice on my my contract or my fights or, or if you think I could beat them. I could ring you. I could ring my uncle. I could ring anyone in the world and get advice. And, and that's what people can't really wrap their head around is how are you going to stop that? An advisor is an advisor. He offers advice as, as and when it is requested. And if he feels emphatic enough to give it, he will, he will give his advice. Do you know what I mean? And that's it. And I think, you know, I think that the, my comments on the, 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 the BBC rehash with it, it just seems like a nice hour of TV to promote Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury. And that seemed like the main, the main focus for at least half of it was about Tyson Fury's comeback, the fight of AJ. It, it kind of seemed like BBC wanted to get some sort of 
viewing up some sort of buzz from the boxing on their thing, but they haven't got no access to it apart from news reports. You know what I mean? So it's, it just seemed a bit bizarre, to be honest. And a lot of the, 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 the allegations, I mean, there's certain things, I'm not even going to go into it. There's certain things I've read in, in newspapers, you know, Irish media or, or on these, these documentaries that I categorically know to be false. You know what I mean? There's certain things that I've said, point blank. I know to be false. So then when I watch something like this, I'm, I, can't, I can't absorb it when I know there's, hold on, there's two, three things that I definitely know to be false. Of, of, do you know what I mean? Like that's not, that goes against my knowledge of what my life has lived. Okay, you're not, you're not educating me. Like, this isn't educating me. This is slander. This, this is trying to belittle someone and talk down someone. So that's why I kind of switch off on it. And the trolls love it. And it's really become a mad concept because the people that are really trying to talk about and, and put the name down are just the people that love talking about boxing. So overnight, well, I say overnight, but he's become one of the most mentioned names in boxing. And then, uh, and, and I just, I mean, no publicity is bad publicity, I suppose. That's what, that's how I've led my career. Um, if Daniel Kinnan was to be taken away from boxing or he stepped away, how much would the sport suffer in your opinion, Sonny? I mean, I could just say the, the, the stereotypical, the, the cliche, oh, boxing would suffer, the fight fans would suffer. But I know one thing for, for, for fact is the people that would suffer is the boxers. That, that's, that, that's pretty much all I will say and can say on that matter. But trust me, I have seen and have people close to me, people I've trained with, people I've been on GB with, people I've known for years, who have dealt with many other people in boxing, people that was in that documentary. You know what I mean? You know, um, and I have been told firsthand the things by some people what have been done. And then obviously, once court cases are involved and non disclosures, et cetera, et cetera, what I can say becomes very limited. But some really scummy things that, that I would never let happen happen to fighters. And I'm talking just weighing in, and then now certain things have to change. I mean, or let the imagination go for that. What would a promoter try and change of a boxer? But you know, I know for a fact that my career with my management team, you know, my manager in my management team, he steers me in, in, in every right, right direction. If I ever need advice from me personally, I know who I'll call. You know what I mean? And, and, and it's as simple as that. That's the extent of it. I mean, if I'm honest, he's never been to any of my fights. It's just, it's just someone that I can tap into as a, a source of, of knowledge and information. And if I'm honest, it probably is a more one-sided uh, relationship because he gets very, very little next to nothing of me and I get a hell of a lot of him in, in, in the sense of advice and, and, and wisdom. So yeah, it's, 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 it's one of them. So for me, it's, it is what it is. I deal with people face value. I mean, there's people all around me, all the people that I've grown up with, people that you know every day. Um, I don't ask anyone their day-to-day -day life if it doesn't concern me. Do you know what I mean? So what I see in the newspaper or something isn't something that I'm going to take as read because I feel like I've got my, my, my eye open a bit wider than a lot of people. So I, I joke and I laugh. You see me on Twitter talking about COVID every day. Do you know what I mean? Just because it's, it's, it's just a buzz at this point, because it just winds people up. You're not going to change anything. Me saying, "Oh, how many deaths did we have today?" Do you know what I mean? Like, but there's a lot. There's a lot that goes around it. There's a lot that goes around it, and I just I know he's he, he's that when in the sense of the sport for the boxers, where without him, a lot of big fights are going to struggle. They're gonna they're gonna struggle, and and, and I feel like. People can spend days and days hashing it over and going back and forth and trying to comment on every MTK boxer's post, but nothing in my eyes is looking like it's going to change. Like, well, I don't know what it's trying to achieve. I don't know the grand scheme of things, but I will not just soak up passively information that's fed to us. I mean, there's social forms of control that get spin around all the time and then the media is the, the, the first one. So I'm not the, the first to believe everything I read. Let's put it that way. Okay, Sonny Edwards, thank you very much for talking to IFL TV. We'll have another catch up when you've got this news that you referred to earlier on. Uh, look after yourself and uh, yeah, all the best uh, for this year, Sonny. Top man.